Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads and it is very cold. So the first thing I want to do is try to get cozy. There we go, much better. Happy holidays, y'all. In this video, I'm back to working on my snowboard build. The original plan was to wrap poured urethane sidewalls around the core, and I ended up doing a combination of pouring the protection for the nose and tails, and gluing the sidewalls on the sides of the board in place. But when I went to profile the core, I ran into some issues. Long story short, I didn't leave enough stock on my tip or tail to account for sniping and the planer, and I didn't fix them down firmly enough, so my urethane blew out. So I'm going to be changing tack to a different technique to make sure that the nose and tail of the board have the protection they need. And in order to do that, I'm going to use something called fill material. Fill material is a sheet stock that gets joined to the nose and tail of the board to make the thinnest areas of the deck more robust. The material I'm using is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It's also sometimes called Umpy or UHM, and it goes by the brand name Ptex, which is the same plastic used in a lot of bases on snowboards and skis. It's two millimeters thick, so it's a little bit thicker than a ski or snowboard base, and it's sanded on both sides to better adhere to epoxy. It came in a roll, so the first thing I need to do is work it until it's flat, which will make it easier to use. Next up, I'm going to start laying out the pieces of fill material for my nose and tail. The seams between the wooden core and the plastic fill are going to have this angled notch. If the seams were a straight line across the width of the deck from rail to rail and the board flexed, that line would be a weak point. Angling the seams and extending them in this kind of puzzle piece way spreads the weakness of that joint out across the length of the board, making it stronger. I thought I was going to have to use a bandsaw to cut the plastic, but it turns out it's really easy to do with a sharp razor. I used a straight edge to keep my cuts clean, and a little while later I had my nose and tail material cut out. Next up, we need to cut the core so that the core and fill material mate together cleanly. To do this, I mark myself a center line. Then I measured the height of my wedge and marked a perpendicular line. I can use that line to keep my fill material oriented so it doesn't go into the board all twisted. Next, I got the fill lined up and traced it onto the core. Then it was time to do the same for the tail. Looking at the layout I had for the tail, I was worried that there wasn't a lot of material in the joint here beyond the sidewalls, so I decided to recut my fill. All I had to do was retrace the new profile, and then it was over to the bandsaw to cut it out.
I also took a little time to clean up my saw lines with a knife. And now my nose and tail materials seat nice and snugly into the core. We're looking good. There's one last thing to take care of. Since the core was wedge shaped in the nose and tail, that means the height of the core and the height of the film materials don't match up. And that has the potential to cause some serious issues when it comes time for the layup. So I need to thin down the core where it meets the nose and tail fill. At first I tried doing this with hand planes, but they were having trouble with the urethane sidewalls, so I moved over to a handheld belt sander to finish the job. And once that seam is nice and flat, I'm done. I've got my core, sidewalls, and my nose and tail protection all ready to go into the layout. Unfortunately, having to sort of patch my nose and tail in this way means that I've lost any of the precision that I had in my core profile, which kind of bums me out. I sort of feel like this whole project has been me attempting to do things the right way, messing it up, and having to go back and do some kind of hacky solution to make it work. It hasn't been a very fun process. But on the other hand, it means I picked up some experience with a much wider variety of board building techniques than I intended to, and I'm able to share those techniques with you guys. I mean, on a single build, we've covered routed and poured sidewalls, cutting sidewalls from a block and attaching them to the core, and using tip and tail fill material. Protecting the core of a board using all three of those methods is absurd and it's redundant, but that does mean that I've been able to demonstrate all of those techniques to you, so that if you go and build a board, you can pick and choose the ones that'll work for you. So next up in this project, I'm gonna be making the mold for this board and I've got a question for you guys. How would you guys like to see me press this snowboard? For this build, I can either press it with a vac bag or I can make a clamping jig similar to the ones that I've used for skateboards here on the channel before. I've got some experience with both methods and I feel like there's an equal amount of pros and cons to both. So which would you wanna see? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Before I wrap up, I gotta shout out my patrons over on Patreon. The material for that mold is already here in the shop and it was funded in large part with their help. The support over there really does make a big difference and allows me to afford a lot of the projects that I tackle here on the channel. So if you feel like pitching in, it is much appreciated. It helps a ton. There'll be a link down in the description below. Short of that, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see a lot more awesome DIY board sport projects, you should go ahead and subscribe because they're only going to get cooler and more interesting from here. I don't want you to miss out. Go ahead and click that button. Stick with us for a while. It's going to be fun. And as always, I love having you come along with me for the journey. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Very, very delicate place to tap that core. Oof. <sighs> Warm beverages. It is cold. I am prepared. I got my tissues. I got my hot cocoa. We're gonna be all right.